Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to talk about my accomplishments and you know just things that we've done over the last year, maybe the last couple years in how we improved. I'm also going to go over um, the amount that we um, produced as far as my hatchlings go that I'm that I'm holding back. Basically the value, the morph market value I guess. Um, and you know just talk about how many eggs we produced last season and um maybe show you around to some things that we upgraded and then things that i would like to upgrade in 2021 so stay tuned First of all, one of the accomplishments, I guess, or I guess it's part of it, is I was in a contest with Snakes and the Fat Man. Um, be sure to check out his channel on YouTube, Snakes and the Fat Man. He also has an awesome podcast. Uh, there was, I believe, at the end, there was nine contestants total. Okay, so the contest, if you won first prize, you are winning a two-hour interview on his podcast, which if you haven't heard of Snakes and the Fat Man, you need to check it out. We ended up coming in second place, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, I, I think there was like 80 votes away from first place. Shane Kelly got the first place and definitely well deserved. Uh, if you watch his channel, I'm sure you probably do if you're watching mine, you'll see the amount of work he does and his content's pretty good. So definitely well deserved. Um, but it was still really cool being in that and one of my um, highlights of last year. Also, I was on actually this podcast here, which um, I'm not sure if they're still going to be doing it or not. It was on Wednesday nights. So um, you can see the name there. Hopefully it's not backwards or not on this camera. But uh, Reptiles Unplugged, Adam and Joel. So um, they were doing Wednesday nights. I think they said they're still going to be doing it, but not as much. Either way, definitely check them out. It's Adam with Beach Bum Exotics, and it's Joel with State 48. I think it's State 48 Exotics. I'm sorry if I'm wrong on that, but I think that's what it is. But yeah, check them guys out. It was pretty cool being on, on their podcast as well. And I was also on a, um, with r &B Reptiles. He had me on like a 15 minutes of, not 15 minutes, lame, just a 15 minute breeder I don't know what he calls it, um, just 15 minutes talking to breeders or whatever. Even though it ended up being two hours of recording, but he only needed 15 minutes, so a lot of that got chopped up. So check that out as well, R&B Reptiles. Um, really cool guys over there. So, um, and another thing is I did buy a few animals this season. Actually, hang on just a minute. I'm gonna go through, where did I put that? Oh, it's right here. Okay, so one of the things I'm, I was going to do for uh, for what I've done this year, meaning uh, 2020 or last year, is my pickups that I ended up buying. Let's hold back. All right, pickups. So I ended up I ended up picking up seven animals this season. And um, the amount of money that I spent on them total was about $9,040. So um, I don't think I missed any out. And as far, oh, and one of the animals that I picked up, which was really cool that he sent this, but Will Moreau's over at Royal Canadian Reptiles, or RCR, I got this hat. And then he ended up sending this little puzzle box. If you could read what it says there. And it says to watch the USB. So we ended up plugging that in. Here's the, here's the little USB that he uh, sent us. Now I'm not gonna play the whole video, just a real quick clip of it, you know, but um, it's a contest that he's doing. He actually, there's 50 people are there so right now you're probably Hang wondering on second, what the right? heck's going on here i'll let this play for a second hopefully he doesn't mind
What is going on, guys? Uh, I just want to take a quick second here to, to thank you guys for, for your trust in us this year. Uh, if you're watching this video, um, you're one of you know our, our valued customers. Not that every customer is not valued, but you guys took a took a sizable um, sizable chance with us this year, and uh, and I really do appreciate it. Um, let's get to the fun stuff. If you are watching this video, you probably got one of these. Uh, you probably opened it up, noticed that there's a puzzle inside it. You've also noticed there's a USB stick, and this is probably in your computer right now. Uh, basically, what we're going to do is uh, we thought we'd send you guys something, a little, a little, little competition, a little, not a competition, a little contest, I suppose. Uh, basically, every single, uh, every single one of you guys, um, there's going to be a number on the back of some of your puzzle pieces. Basically, we assigned each puzzle piece. There's 50, pu 50 puzzle pieces uh, in total. And uh, basically, each puzzle piece was worth a set amount. So some of you guys may only have one. Some of you guys may have five. Some of you guys may have three. Uh, so basically, what we're going to do is we're going to do a live on YouTube. Uh, maybe on YouTube. I'll, I'll let you guys know. I think we'll probably do live on YouTube. Make sure you're following on, uh, on us on Instagram because that's the easiest way for me to do it. I might even do a live on Instagram, something like that for you guys. But basically, I'm going to put 50 numbers. You have to, these are labeled 1 through 50 and they're scattered around to all you guys. Uh, and basically what's going to happen is we're going to put 1 through 50 in a bingo uh, roller. And the first number to come out is going to be prize number 3. Prize number three is going to be a thousand dollar gift card to us at RCR. Uh, you can redeem it whenever you want, guys. I want to make sure you understand this. That, that does not include our holdbacks. Just because you won this this prize doesn't mean you can say I want your DG puzzle. No way. <laughs> okay, it's got to be stuff that's available. Let's be reasonable here. Um, prize number two is going to be a twenty five hundred dollar uh, gift card to to RCR, and then prize number three is going to be a thirty five hundred dollar gift card. To our, prize number one will be a $3,500 gift card. Uh, I think it's, you know, you guys have an opportunity. We want to thank you guys for, for supporting us. Uh, thank you guys for taking your setting. Okay, so how cool is that? I'm not going to play the whole video. Um, i got to make sure it's okay that he allows me to do that, which I'm sure he's perfectly fine with that. Um, uh, yeah, so anyway, I did put the puzzle together. Ended up being a desert ghost puzzle. So it's a, a puzzle of a puzzle. Really cool. So um, even, you know, that's cool. I got I got one in 50 chance. I, I, I got one number. I bought one animal from them. I don't know if it goes off the amount, of, amount you spend or amount of animals. Doesn't matter. But even if I don't win, I mean, I got the hat. The box, you know, which is actually engraved and everything volume one i don't know if that means he's going to do this like next year and so on and so forth we'll find out i guess but uh how cool is that man that's pretty awesome that he sent sent this stuff to us you know eventually i'm going to put this i already had it together once i'm going to put it together again and probably put a little frame and find a wall to hang it up in here so oh uh, let me show the animal i got from him might as well do that and perfect thing is this guy just shed so, I don't, hang on, let me uh, adjust this camera. I don't have a camera girl today. It's me by myself, so bear with me. And of course, he's going to be all balled up. But he is a he is a Cypress Orange Dream Honey 100% Het Desert Ghost and 100% Het Cryptic or no Het Krypton. That being said, he's going to be either 100% cryptic or 100% clown. If you um, not sure how that whole thing works, Billy with Mutation Creation does a really cool video on the cryptic gene explaining that. You'll know the video because he's actually wearing my shirt with my logo on it. And Justin Kabulka just did a video on it as well on the whole cryptic krypton. So, but yeah, really, really nice looking animal. And I'm really happy that he was able to, to sell them to me and I was able to get it because it's going to really work well with my my future projects that I have here. thing is I have like six girls for them. <laughs> All, there's a couple, um, three of them are, let me just show you, three of them are Kryptons, 100% Het Desert Ghost. 
and the other three are at least 100% Het Clown, 100% Het Desert Ghost. But yeah, there's one of them there. I'm not going to show all three. So, uh, so that's pretty cool that, that I was able to pick that animal up and definitely shout out to him for what he's doing. Didn't have to do this. And I know he's putting out a lot of money just for those boxes alone. And the ship to America from Canada, I know the shipping cost for anything has gone up. So yeah, it's really awesome that he's doing something like that. So thanks again, Will. I appreciate it, man. Um, now anyways, some of the things I want to do. Um, well, actually, here, let's go into this. This this is a, one of my new pickups, this, this big rack right here. It's a 5540 ARS. And I do have these two old-style galvanized before the before the um, the stainless steel. They started doing stainless steel. They did galvanize. But these are the old 70s. I redid all the heat tape and all that. When people say they last forever, man, I mean, this, these are, I think, at least 12 years old, if not older. Um, this one's empty right now. Um, when these get a little bigger, they're going to be transferred over to here. And we're thinking about probably not 2021, maybe 2022, picking another one of these racks here up. We're going to be losing this whole rack here. Um, I probably will hang on to it in my main house that this facility here is actually um a pool house it's a separate house on my property which is nice because it's paid off and all that so no overhead as far as that goes um I'm not trying to brag or anything i'm just trying to just show you what i got going on here that's all so sorry if it comes off sounding like i'm bragging i'm not i i built this from ground up and really just happy that i have it you know so but anyways we're gonna be losing that, getting, getting another one of these over here. Um, this hatchling, hatchling rack here, one of the things we are trying to do in 2021 is if you look over here, this big mess, this was, like I said, this was a house that I was building. It originally started off as like a four car garage. It's 720 square foot. And I uh, started building the cabinets and everything. Never got to doing the doors. But since we turned it into a snake facility, I'm actually in my 2021 um, projects or things that I want to accomplish for this year. I want to rip all these bottom cabinets out and I want to get some sort of a larger sink here, um, maybe some kind of commercial sink. And then however this lays out, whether I have it going this way or this way, still have to figure that out. But from here over, and then going this way, this bench will be coming out. But uh, all that is going to be hatchling racks. And I might even double up the height on these. I thought about doing these here. These are like the sea serpent racks. But um, if you follow Richard over at Da Vinci Boa, if you look on his Instagram, I think it's Instagram or Facebook, check him out. He, he just bought some new racks. They're basically built like this kind of but the quality that I, I mean i'm a cabinet guy i could build these myself but i just don't have time i'd rather just pay somebody else that has the whole setup and everything ready to go but looking at the quality of work i believe his name is Vinny. um that the quality of work and that he puts into the racks that he builds just really nice he like does a dado for each shelf um, you just check out Richard Da Vinci on um, Instagram. You'll you'll see what I'm talking about the the hatchling racks that he builds. Plus, there's a whole nother um, level too, so that gives me a little more hatchling you know space for the hatchlings. So yeah, my plan is from here over, and then all these base cabinets here just going to all come out, probably thrown in a dumpster or whatever. I'll probably have some kind of a stainless steel top that goes over this. And then another thing I'd like to do is this table here. And Billy, if you're watching this, Mutation Creation, I know you're uh, you're talking about getting some kind of a table for, you know, where you do your YouTube and stuff. I don't know if this is too small for you. I know you said everything shut down because of COVID. Now this is a Home Depot product, Husky. This is the highest it goes. 
but it cranks all the way down really low. It's on wheels. Um, I'm not a big fan of the butcher block top. That's how it comes. But I've actually got a quote of a stainless steel wrap where it'll just go over top of this and kind of captivate all that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I think it's like a hundred bucks or something the guy I use. So uh, maybe that'll work for your table. I don't know. Maybe you're looking for something else. But either way, I love this thing because it's on wheels. It it raises up and lowers really easy. You know, so and it goes all the way down to this level here. So really cool. Um, the other things I did not. Oh, yeah. I'm getting sidetracked keep rambling on I'm sorry guys this might be a two-part video all right so all right I talked about my pickups from 2020 that's one of the things I wanted to, to talk about in here so I spent hang on there we go all right so uh, yeah I, I spent about nine thousand and forty dollars on on my pickups which basically was seven animals and really powerhouse animals. You happen to see one of them that I got. Um, also, the amount of eggs that I produced last season, I had, I had 20 clutches. The very last clutch, six eggs. If you've seen my Instagram or YouTube or anything, I don't think I put it on YouTube, but out of six eggs, only one survived at the end, ended up being a banana pied. Um, but I had 122 eggs total out of 20 clutches, so that's not bad. Um, also, my holdbacks. Hang on. Let's see, I ended up, I ended up keeping 32 holdbacks, which I'm hoping to be able to do around the same amount next season too, or probably at least minimum 20, anyways, for what I'm trying to get. Um, now, I don't like to do the value of things too much on YouTube because numbers change, and I don't want to feel like I'm bragging or anything neither, but. I thought I'd throw it out there anyway, just you know, just for my records in the future. Um, so I had 32 holdbacks, and going off of morph market pricing, you know, not what people are trying to sell, but what have sold, and the closest I can get to, you know, the genetics and stuff that I have. Um, I've come up with, ended up being thirty-seven thousand five hundred dollars. So basically, I have that's what I produced for holdbacks for myself. So 37,500, you know, in value of, of the holdbacks that I have. So that's that's pretty cool. That's a lot better than last year and the year before. This is, I'm going into my fourth year. So that was my third year breeding. So really pretty happy about that, you know. Got really lucky with some clutches, you know, and found some extra stuff that I didn't know I had in my collection, which really worked out. So um, now that I think, I think probably kind of wraps it up in what I wanted, wanted to talk about in this video. Oh yeah, you know, I'm missing a bunch of stuff. So yeah, that's the ball python side, I guess. Um, some of the other stuff we did pick up, which I'm not going to price out any of that or anything like that. Um, but as you know, if you follow me already or have been following me, I did pick up some boas. Really cool looking ones. That there is a jungle blood and this one here is a hog island ghost look at the variances the look at the different colorations in these animals this one here which messed up his uh paper a little bit i guess i should look to see if this is even focusing in or not which Kind of having problems with this one here. But anyway, that is a Motley Inca double hat black eyed annery T positive platinum. Let me see if I just get her out. Sometimes these dark animals are hard to capture. I don't have any like special lighting or nothing hooked up right now, so I don't know if you can see her. But yeah, this is probably, I don't know, I love the Inca stuff. How it separates the top pattern from the side patterns. Really cool looking. So. Alright, so there's those three. I, mean, I have two more to show. Okay, so this one here. 
I love the Super Kraken. This is only a Kraken, but it's, you know, stepping myself in that direction of of producing a Super Kraken. But um, yeah, so this is a Hypo Kraken. And then this last girl, last but not least, is just a Central American dirty paper. But no, it's just an IMG female, just a Central American. I have to clean these papers. Okay, so that's the BOA project that we picked up for this season, uh, 2020. And then another thing that's more or less my wife's project is um, is this other room here. This is this is basically my wife's room. So these are probably they were out earlier. These are all ornate eramastics. We picked all seven of these up from Phil over at at um, Arids Only. I'm trying to open this tub. Hang on, or this tank. Let's see if I can try to get a good look at him. Yeah, I don't want to mess with him too much, but yeah, there he is. Yeah, so there's there's one of them. They're really cool looking. You can see some better pictures and maybe short videos on my Instagram if you go check it out. So yeah, we got one in each one of these. These are 55 inches long. And he split them up. They're all different clutches. Uh, one of the things I I wanted to do was when, when I talked to him about getting all these animals is I didn't want like to put a sister and a brother together so I probably have like maybe two sisters but the males and the females are all from different clutches so works out pretty good and they're all doing really good some of them were or, uh, in Burmation a little longer than others so some of them are going to be a little bigger than others you know but once once they're uh, they're done sleeping or whatever they'll uh, really start to catch up but yeah, this guy's checking out the camera. She names them all. This one's name is Neville. Here's another one down. Oh well, yeah, we got so we got we got six of these or seven of these all in the 55 inch tubs or tanks. I'm sorry. Anybody curious what type of tanks these are? There you go. That's the brand. If you want to check them out, they're really well made. They have the screen, heavy duty screen lids and everything. I don't use the lids. So these guys can't jump up. I think my battery on here is going to die soon. So if it does, we'll have to just end the video. All right. All right. So. I kind of showed you a little bit around here. I told you what I'm gonna do with all this right here. Now we got this whole area here. My my plan is with these boas, of course they're just in these little hatchling racks. This one here is empty. And I don't even have it plugged in or anything like that. Um, what I wanna do is we're gonna keep them all together in here, the balls and the bows. But I wanna have some sort of a separation. So when I do get, um, this other, well, we're probably not going to get another one of these racks for another two years, but I do want to get probably some 90s for the boas. Probably, I don't know, two stacks of, I think they come in nines, nine high or something like that. Unless I do Vinny's stuff, he can do custom build whatever sizes I want. But I'm not sure if I'm going to go with the Freedom Breeder or the ARS or... Vinny's, I'm not sure yet, but I think I want to do something maybe You know, I'm not sure how I'm gonna set that up yet. However, I however I do do it There's gonna be a little bit of a separation from my boas To where my ball pythons are. I don't want them right next to each other I don't think it's gonna be an issue or anything like that to do that, but You know for my own peace of mind, I guess so this is where we're at now though. I mean if you look, I'm going to see if I can find some pictures of this room, you know, when I just kind of getting started and moved in here. 
And then my main house is where my original reptile room was. And I'm sure I have some pictures laying around of that. I'll see if I can throw them in. And they'll be right about where I'm talking now when you see them, if I have them. And if I don't, I'm sorry. So another thing we have is rhino iguanas and pectinatas, which are, you know, Mexican spiny tails. Also known as panda pie, just the coloring of them. Oh, my dog is just knocking on the door. Oh, some over here, bud. So, that's my boy. What are you doing, buddy? Oh, you've been laying in the dirt, it looks like, so. All right, here's my uh, small little sticker board here. Let's throw some of these up in the video. Thanks to everybody that has uh, given me the stickers for this. Sounds like my wife just got home. Ah, you guys are going to be on camera. No. Say hello. So. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and wrap this one up. Uh, it might be one, it might be two. We'll figure it out. But um, thanks again for watching. And I think the next videos, I'm going to go ahead and do something like maybe maybe all my desert ghost project and maybe the next one be like all my clown project and all my puzzle you know maybe i'll do something like that just let me know if that's something you guys would be interested in watching um thanks again and everybody have a good one all right so we're gonna go check out these uh rhinos iguanas oh uh, rhino iguanas actually this guy's in the middle of eating Here's one of my girls. And I have a wide angle camera for this, probably not the best one to have on, but you guys kind of get the idea. Um, these are the two smaller ones I have in here. And my girl, my big girl, which is right here, unfortunately broke her arm. So she's got the little cast on. Um, and the only thing that I can think of is see the rope that I have on these little these um, these little ramps that I have on here, and then I have rope around the poles here. I didn't have that before, and sometimes I would notice her climbing up, say this one here, and then as she's climbing, it, the wood is so new that there was no gription for, her, so she would slide. So I think she possibly slid off and fell um and i used to have a second level shelf if you could see these posts see how high how much higher they go i just eliminate that whole second shelf because i really do not know how she fell if that's what happened um also these clay these are the clay riffing tiles i had some of those on the shelf and i seen one that was down here broken but i seen that you know a few weeks ago and she was fine a few weeks ago so i don't think that was the case so i went ahead and moved all these on the ground now i do know when the sun's beating down on these they like to lay on top of them sorry about my shadow but they like to lay on top of them you know for their belly heat or whatever so yeah um i've talked to a few people that have rhinos and they say sometimes things just happen you can't you don't you can't explain it you know I did the best I can by removing that top shelf and putting some gription. You know, I stapled these ropes on there pretty well. You know, there's no flexibility in them or nothing, so they're getting up and down a lot better. Um, the good thing is, you know, the x-rays, I'll see if I have a picture of it, where the bone did break. There's another bone right next to it that's good, so uh, it actually works as a natural um, splint. And then we have an external splint on there just in case. So she's doing well. She's, you know, hobbling around. And I, I actually took these ramps off so she wouldn't go up. And I just wanted to keep her on the bottom level. But then she was trying to climb up the wall and jump in and everything else. So it's like, if she's going to get up there, I'd rather make it easier for her with putting the ramps back in instead of, you know taking a chance in her injuring herself you know and it's best for her to be outside you know with the natural sun and everything especially when there's a bone injury so 
I'm sorry about that, guys. My battery died. Thank God I have another one. All right, I'm gonna go back in here again and yeah, like I'm just gonna finish this off real quick as far as these, and I'll go ahead and show you my pectinatas. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, she's been eating. You know, actually, the day we took her to the vet, I went to go pick her up, and she walked over her little food plate. You know, and she started eating as I was grabbing her. So she's doing really well. She, it's just her arm is swollen up and kind of limping a little bit. But um, I'm 100% I'm confident she'll be 100% in a few, uh, couple weeks. So, and these two little, they're smaller. That's the, that's the boy. No, that's the girl. And then that's a boy there. And then of course Pippi, she's a girl. Um, this is a pretty nice size cage. It's the ceilings are eight foot. Half of it's covered, you know, for shade and. Of course, the other half is screen, you know, for their sun. We've got a cool little fountain here. Probably got to clean the water though. And the fountain is actually ran on solar, solar light. So you'll see. I'll see if I can find a picture of the solar panel that's outside. But um, yeah, it's. I believe it's. What is this? Twelve foot by eighteen foot. So it's a really decent size for these guys. I mean, I could put a, I could throw a huge monitor in here and be perfectly happy with this enclosure. So, but anyways, um, yeah, this is another one of my 2020 accomplishment, uh, accomplishments was to build this enclosure. So, all right, now let's go take a look at the Pectinata's enclosure. Now, that enclosure was built in 2019. And this is that's where I originally had the rhino iguanas at, but the pectinatas were picked up in 2020, so I can actually show them off because it was one of my, I guess, last year accomplishments. So that's even if they're out. Let me see if they're out. All right. So this one I have a little more work to do still. Now there's one of the pectinatas right there. These guys are still small, like I said, about a year old maybe at that. So they're spiny tail iguanas. They're um, Tinosaur pectinatas, but the, the coloring or the morph, or I don't think it's a morph, it's a locality, I think. But um, the black and the white, they're, they're considered panda dragons. Um, or, uh, what do they call them? Pides. I don't know if they would be called pides in the, the iguanas or not, but uh, panda dragons, there's two of them in here. That's the male. You can see his little dorsal comb is a little taller than the other, where I think the female might be inside this hide. I've got a heat right now for him. Now, so I have those two in here, and this is a 12 by 11 foot enclosure, which is plenty big for these guys. I don't have to worry too much about these guys falling because they're they always hang out in trees and stuff so i'm actually gonna throw some more branch type things like this i think eventually and then i also have these guys in here the little red foots now before people start saying oh you should not be cohabiting red foots and spiny tail iguanas i did my research and i've talked to several people that's that have had them together for many of years so they're perfectly fine so um i always check to make sure everything like that is cool and i talked to some of the biggest um breeders as far as iguanas and tortoises and stuff and you know they they told me what to what to be careful of and this and that oh there's the girl so here's the girl here Now, it's kind of, the lighting really sucks, but you can see there's not much of a dorsal comb on her. As far, you know, compared to the other one. And as these guys age, they'll get more white and more bright. And the male's dorsal comb will really stand out more than the female. Now, one of my uh, projects for 2021, probably pretty recent, or pretty soon, will be 
I'm going to be cleaning all this mess up back here on the outside, removing these banana trees and that little palm there, and I'm going to build an outside tortoise hide where I'm going to cut like a hole here so they can go in and then it'll be fully enclosed on the outside with heat pad and all that. That way it's not taking up more room in here because I have four of these guys. Right now they're small but they will get about the size of a, um, of a hard hat, you know, so gives them some room on the outside and doesn't take up much space in here. And then I'll have a lid on there so I can open it up from the outside to check on them or whatever I need to do, you know, make sure the heat pad's working correctly when it's cooler out. So, but um, anyway, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up. It's gonna probably be two videos. So I do appreciate everybody that, that watched and um, if you haven't liked or if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do that i really would appreciate that and hit the like and share and everything else you do for the channel or for the youtube so thanks again guys